So today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different and reviewing Quag Kage's manga. I know this has been out for a while, but I've been back and forth between my cousins and my grandparents because my mom is in England, and the whole thing has been a pain in the ass, and I really only had time now with school and everything to sit down and review it. So let's get in to Quag Kage's manga. The name is Johto of Aceo, and I'm not going to tell you what happened in the chapter, but I want you to go read it, but I will be spoiling it when I give my general opinion of it. Okay, so first of all, Johto as a character is my favorite main character I have seen probably since Izuku, and I think I like him more than Izuku, or Deku, for you My Hero Academia fan. And I'm going to explain why. First of all, the guy is considered to be a prodigy. I mean, he's considered to be really, really good at what he does, and I think that is really, really good. Because, you know what, guys? Uh, who else here is sick of the underdog? Because Naruto has especially made that a very recurring thing. There is nothing wrong with an underdog story. Naruto probably right now my favorite manga. Reason for that, another video. But, um, yeah, Naruto probably my favorite manga right now. And I love a good underdog story. I do. Underdog stories are great. However... Who wants to see it all the time? No one. Because what makes underdog stories so great is that we don't get them often. When every story is an underdog story, it stops becoming special. You stop getting excitement when you see the underdog overcome something. So to see something new and fresh, like the story of somebody who's really good at what they do in the introduction, being introduced is really good. Now, this goes into one of my very small criticisms of it, is that I do think there was a bit too much narration. Now, the reason I think there was a bit too much narration is I don't feel like, when narrating, I don't feel like we get a good vibe of for who Johto is as a person. We get a decent one. He's pretty quiet. He's not very loud. He's very smart. We kind of get that kind of vibe. But really, that's all we really know about him by the end of chapter one. So while I am very interested in the overall plot and overall story in this new world, I find it very intriguing, I'm not like, oh, I want to hear Johto's story. I'm more just generally curious about what is going on. We don't really get to know Johto very well. Johto very well. And I know that's kind of the point of reading, but you know, I, don't, I, I only know who Johto is, like what I'm saying. Because so much was just lame by narration. I felt like what would have been, what, yeah, what would have been better would have been to have a ton of Johto narration. Like having Johto be the narrator, so you can get kind of like a quirk or two about his personality. Get what makes Johto, Johto in there. I also really like that he has a group of friends already. Or not even friends, we're not sure, but he, has, he definitely has a group of acquaintances or friends. And that is great. The one thing I always find annoying, and now don't get me wrong, sometimes it works. I'm not bashing any theory when I say this. But it does get annoying to constantly have to watch these main characters make friends. It's like, we make friends in real life. Sometimes it's done really well. Naruto, One Piece do this well. But it's still annoying to always have to watch these people make friends. It's nice to just jump into these people's lives when things get interesting. And then be like, oh, these are their childhood friends. Okay, moving on. Like, we don't need a detailed explanation of how they met all the other main characters. You can just introduce these people as main characters and have the audience roll with it. The audience doesn't need to know how two people that live in the same village met. They clearly live in the same town, village, area, I'm not sure what it is yet, but because there wasn't much detail given. But they clearly live in the same place, so it's very likely they either went to school together, saw each other while they were, saw each other while they were buying food with their parents or something. But, you know, they're playing together as kids. Like, we don't need to get an in-depth explanation of how one character scraped his name. And, you know, they became friends. So I'm glad that he already has a little circle of friends. Then there is the Proctor Lady. I'm not sure if she has a name, so I'm just gonna call her Proctor Lady. I'm still getting into the series. Only one chapter. It takes me a while to learn everybody's name. That's why I'm really only talking about Johto at this point. But, so the Proctor Lady is awesome. One thing I like, which is obviously probably is an American thing, I'm not trying to play Flappy Japan, but the fact that the first character we meet that is like a big shot, that clearly bigger than the main character, the woman, is something I really like. All other popular theories I've seen 
I had to be a man. Shane, Iruka, uh, Rookie on Bleach, huh? I kind of just ruined my own point there, but the point is that it's not typically a woman, and I really like that it is. I feel like that gives me, personally, the progressive part of me that wants to see more women in manga, more powerful women, more important female characters. That part of me, I really enjoyed it. I also felt like she was really well designed. She definitely gave off this air of, I know what I'm doing, and I am superior to you, and I really like that. It's clear that even though Johto is a genius, his dick girl is still probably better than him. Johto's mom is hot. There, I said it, she's hot. She gives him some, like, wristband. This is the only plot point I'll go into because it's in the very beginning of the chapter. But she gives him some wristband, and it seems like it's, like, armed with, like, potions. So I'm assuming, like, magic potions and stuff like that if it's in this universe. But it appears to be really important. And I feel like, I'm hoping it's not a Deus Ex Machina later on, but I'm going to give the stupid benefit of a doubt, and I'm really hoping it turned out to be good. And my only gripe with it is that the powers, I didn't fully understand how they work, but granted this is chapter one, I don't think I fully understood how anything works in any series besides One Piece, where right? but chapter one being Oda made everything incredibly simple. But I have a feeling, if I know Quackog get off of his video, I have a feeling the power system won't be, like, really, really simple. I'm getting the vibe that this series will probably have complex characters, very much a Naruto, Hunter Hunter kind of move set to the characters and their powers. So, yeah, so that's probably just me. And also, I'm kind of stupid in the beginning with theory. I, I wasn't able to get into Hunter Hunter because I thought Neng was too complicated at times. So, yeah. Um, I'm kind of stupid, so it could just be me being stupid. Maybe, maybe Quackage made it really obvious, and I'm just the idiot in the room. Who knows? But God, hope you enjoyed my quick review of it. I'm actually planning on reviewing this when chapter come out. Like this, I'm really enjoying. This was probably the best thing I've read all week, including Boruto, which I should have the review out later today. It's so yeah, you're literally just finding the channel to see reviews of JoJo of ATO. Subscribe. Can, because this isn't a weekly series, at least at the moment, I will have the review out every day on the dot as soon as I can possibly get it out because, of course, it's not very consistent, unlike with weekly stock, which is harder to do consistently. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Like the video if you did. Subscribe for more videos from me. I have a Boruto video on why Boruto needs to be lighthearted coming out. 